Hey, what's up guys? Thanks for dropping by the channel. So for this video, I want to talk to you guys about the Omega Aquaterra, which presently in my collection is arguably the best summer watch for this year. So I've owned uh, this blue dial 41 millimeter version of the Aquaterra for about the past three weeks, and it's pretty much never left my wrist. And what I consider a great summer watch is a watch with a playful dial, and I just love the blue colorway for this guy, as well as how the dial plays with the light. It has to be a swimmable watch, which this one is actually part of a Seamaster family from Omega, so you get 150 meters of water resistance here. And it also has to be quite robust. And this watch does have Omega's latest caliber, the 8900, which I'll go into more detail throughout the review portion of this video. And it's also got a very nice sapphire crystal, and it's extremely legible to boot. I should mention that I've owned a few Omega Seamaster Professional 300s in my day, and while they're great dive watches, I didn't find them as comfortable because they had a relatively long lug-to-lug, -lug, and the bracelets were quite thick and non-tapering. Now if you contrast that to the Aquaterra, you have a relatively short wingspan here, and this rubber strap is extremely supple, and it does taper quite well. So why don't we flip perspectives now, and I'll show you guys this watch up close in my studio for the review portion of the video. So now that we're in the studio, you can see I got the Omega Aquaterra with the uh, packaging that comes with this watch if you were to buy it. Um, so it does come with a very nice Omega wood grain box as well as some cards with the international warranty. You have the pictogram card showing you all the different complications and then you have the chronometer certificate. Now feeling this watch in hand, it does have some nice wrist presence and a bit of heft to it. I actually weighed this watch with the rubber strap coming in at 109 grams and the pricing on this is about 7,350 Canadian dollars but you can also purchase this watch with the OEM bracelet which will bump up the weight a little bit and the price will increase to about 77 or 7,800 Canadian dollars I believe. Now you can also purchase the Aquaterra in a few different sizes. As I mentioned at the beginning, I have the 41 millimeter version. And then let's talk about the other case dimensions. So if I flip this watch to the side, uh, the lug to lug, so the wingspan between my thumbs right here, comes in at 47 millimeters. Overall case height comes in at 13.3 millimeters. And that's to the bottom of this display case back here and to the top of this slightly domed sapphire crystal. And you can see that this sapphire crystal contains a very strong anti-reflective treatment on both the top and underside, giving you gorgeous viewing angles. At times that crystal doesn't even look like it's there. And then also the lug opening for the supplied rubber strap is an even 20 millimeters, which I really like. It opens you up to a host of universal secondary strap offerings if you want to accessorize later. Now I quickly want to talk about the overall case finishes before we move into that dynamic blue dial. So you have very nice uh, horizontal brushwork on the sides of the case. And then if you look at this nice polished transition, you have those classic Omega Lyre style lugs, which is a polished bevel that gets even greater as you get to the extremity of the case here. And uh, the top of the fixed bezel here is all done in high polish, which is very similar to say like a Rolex Explorer. And there's a nice little touch here too with the supplied rubber strap. So um, you can actually see that the integration to the head of the watch is quite good with the strap and it even has this embedded uh, metal portion as well just to keep the rigidity of like the end link and to make sure that there's like a really nice integration with no daylight poking out. Now this rubber strap is also very high quality. You can see it's kind of got a nice uh, pyramid pattern in the center, contrasting white stitch. It does taper a little, so it is 20 millimeters at the head of the watch. And then as you get closer to the clasp here, it goes down to about 18 millimeters. 
Even the clasp is finished to a high standard. A nice embossed Omega logo with some top brush work done here. And then you can see to the sides there's some uh, polish work done on the twin trigger release system. So opening this guy up you can see a completely milled out swing arm. You have Omega that's written on the underside of a clasp. And then on this internal portion of a clasp you can see how the tail end is actually captured. So you do have perforations in the strap and you can actually capture it through the clasp here. So when you close it up there's actually no tail portion sticking out. It's all kept internally and everything is nice and comfortable. This is a vulcanized rubber and it's extremely supple and it's really good for all day wear in my opinion. Now moving back to the dial, um, with the Aquaterra line one of their hallmark features is this teak or uh, yacht deck pattern where you have striations of uh, different sizes that in this case run horizontally and with earlier iterations of the Aquaterra I believe it ran vertically so from like 12 to 6 o'clock. And another subtle difference uh, with this recent updated Aquaterra since about 2017, you have the date aperture cut out at the 6 o'clock position instead of the 3 o'clock. And I really love the symmetry that this provides and I'm really happy that they made this change. And what really stands out to me is just the overall finishing to the applied indexes and logo and as well as subtle touches like the handset and even a very subtle sunburst that you get with this teak dial as well. So each hour index is multifaceted. You kind of have like a truncated triangle shape to them. And to actually offset the uh, horizontal teak pattern, you can see that all the brushwork for each of the indices actually have nice vertical brushing. So there's a lot of clean lines to this watch. And even the hand stack, it also has very nice vertical brushwork as does the applied Omega logo just below the 12 o'clock position. Now I do have to say that the level of individual finish to the indices and hands are quite razor sharp and it's very much similar to what you would find on say like a Grand Seiko, which is a very large compliment to give it I would say. Now because of all these really fine lines you can get some really nice reflections and light play so even in low light situations this watch is extremely legible. But to assist it when you have no light, this watch also carries Swiss Superluminova that actually has a bit of a blue teal color to it, which also ties in nicely with the blue dial. So that's a very nice touch and attention to detail that Omega has as well. Now you will see just above the 6 o'clock position, it says it's a coaxial master chronometer. So the actual heartbeat for this watch houses the in-house Omega Caliber 8900 which you can actually see through the Exhibition Sapphire case back. So I'm going to flip this watch over so we can get a better glance at the movement. So this movement runs off of 39 joules. Um, compared to like say the 8800 that you would find on the Seamaster Professional 300, this version actually has twin mainstring barrels. So parenthetically that will give you a stronger amplitude as the power reserve starts to wind down. And also because there are two barrels you get a longer power reserve of 60 hours. Now this watch does beat away at the coaxial frequency 3.5 hertz. You can actually see if you look a little bit closer that there's a full balance bridge there, a free sprung index, and the uh, hairspring is done in silicone as well. So this watch is extremely anti-magnetic up to about 15,000 gauss. And on top of that Omega certifies this as a master chronometer which goes above and beyond what the COSC would do. Uh, they go to the Swiss Meteorology Institute and give it a, a METIS certification, which actually certifies this watch cased up inside the watch to six positions. The tolerances are extremely tight, so it's uh, only allowed to deviate between zero to five seconds per day. And to my eye, this one's only picking up two seconds per day. Now really the only negative nitpick I will say is that when it comes time to operate this movement you have to utilize the crown which is nicely sized and you can actually see they removed the crown guards from earlier iterations of the Aquaterra. But this crown is very stiff so unscrewing it isn't too bad but there's not even like a subtle pop or anything like that when you get to the neutral winding position. So you can manually wind this movement and then if you pop it out to the first position the 8900 caliber has a nice trick where you can actually independently jump the hour hand. 
without hacking the movement or stopping the seconds, which is actually a really nice feature and I prefer it over a conventional way of hacking the seconds. But say you do want to set to a reference time, if you were to pull out the crown all the way to a second position, that will stop the seconds and then you can actually set this watch um, to any reference time you want and then push it all the way in. And re-threading the crown, again, for me it's like hard to find the threads and it's a little bit stiff. Now all this said, this is a brand new watch, so it's only been operating for about three weeks. Maybe it will settle in, but uh, let me know in the comments if you've had a stiff crown issue with your Omega Aquaterra. So here's a quick wrist shot just to show you how the uh, Aquaterra sits on my 19 centimeter circumference wrist. Uh, for reference, that's seven and a half inches. And you can see that it sits very firmly planted. Now if you do look down the barrel a little bit, because you do have a display case back, you can actually see that um, the lugs do sit a little bit proud of that. Um, so there's a small gap there. But because of the short lug to lug and almost cushion style nature of the case, um, it is very comfortable to wear. And as I mentioned, it's really not going anywhere. So to reiterate, I do think this is probably one of the best uh, summer watches you can get right now because you've got that dynamic blue dial with some amazing case and dial finishing that rivals even what Grand Seiko is putting out. And while the crown is stiff, it is screwed down. There's no wobble there whatsoever. So it's quite robust. And of course, you can take this watch swimming or on any other summer adventures that you want. But as always, guys, I'd love to see your feedback in the comments section of this video. If you enjoy this content, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. It does help out a fair bit. And I hope you guys can all stay safe during this time. And as always, I'll catch you guys in the next video.